Hello, my name is Sascha Preibisch, and today I would lo- like to talk about Refresh Token and OAuth. There was a comment at uh, the uh, one of the other videos asking about Refresh Token and how to log out users that haven't been using a application for quite a long time and how to manage that using OAuth. So for this uh, presentation I'm assuming that user sessions are not managed through browser cookies, for example, I'm assuming they're only access token and refresh token. I know this is usually not the case, but in order to emphasize how these token work, I'm assuming this scenario. So first of all, let's have a look at access token. There's a client, and this client will send a token request. The user gets involved, the user authenticates and grants this uh, this request, and the authorization server will issue an access token. And the client can now use this access token against a protected resource at a resource server. And the client can use this token as often as he likes until this token is uh, expiring. And this is often a lifetime of 5 to 60 minutes. And after this time, the resource server will return an error message and the client has to request a new token. Now if we assume there's no user session whatsoever, the user gets involved again and the user has to authenticate and grant the request again. And now a new access token gets issued and this continues over the uh, usage uh, of this client application. And this is certainly not very user friendly. Now let's see uh, how this looks if there are refresh tokens. The client is sending a token request, the user authenticates and grants a request. This time the server also issues a refresh token and the client continues to use the access token against protected resources until it expires. But this time the client is using the refresh token that it has received, sends it to the token endpoint, sends a refresh token request and after validation the server will issue a new access token. And this flow continues. So this time, the user wasn't involved at all. This, of course, assumes that the refresh token has a longer lifetime than access token. Now, in order to manage these user sessions, let's have a look at the topic of expirations. Let's say a user gets involved and authenticates and grants a request and the refresh token gets issued the first time. And this, of course, uh, will have a lifetime of a certain amount uh, of minutes or days or even weeks, and there's a uh, expiration time. So as soon as a client would use this expiration, or uh, at this refresh token, at this expiration time or afterwards, the user would have to get involved again. But let's say the client is using the refresh token before it expires. Now, at this point in time, the client uses the uh, refresh token and the server issues a new one. And uh, in some scenarios, the server issues this token with a new lifetime. So, this token will now not end at this expiration time, this original time. The lifetime will end after the lifetime of this newly issued refresh token. And I'm always uh, phrasing this as a sliding window because you can imagine that if the client would use a refresh token again at this point in time, where I'm it's showing this red dot, the uh, token would be issued and there would be a new lifetime and this would never end. So you can, you can see that if a user has been involved in the beginning and if this client is using this refresh token before it expires again and again and again, you can assume that your user is using your application constantly and often. But uh, at some point in time, of course, if he stops using it, there will be an expiration and the user gets involved again. The other option that some servers implement is uh, a fixed lifetime. So this means the new refresh token gets issued at this point in time here, 
but the server will issue it with a lifetime that matches the original expiration date. So if you want to support this use case, you have got a scenario where you would say, after one week, my users have to authenticate again. There's no such thing as a sliding window. And those are the two options that I've seen most and that I've also implemented. The sliding window and the fixed window. So if you have a scenario where your users need to authenticate once a week, you would implement this fixed lifetime. If you don't care about uh, the uh, regular authentication, you would implement the sliding window. And as long as your users are active, uh, they don't have to authenticate again. These are the two expirations that I've seen and that are uh, supported in, in many implementations. The other topic that is related to this is uh, the revocation. Let's say there's an authorization server and for this uh, discussion here um, I'm emphasizing, emphasizing the revocation endpoint and the introspection endpoint and let's say there's a resource server that has a protected API. Now, authorization servers issue token as a UUID, as a string. At least this was a typical type of uh, token for, for a long time. And I would like to discuss this here. So whenever a server issues a refresh token or access token as a UUID, these tokens are placed in a token storage, a database. And this database is used as a whitelist. Now let's say a client sends a token to the revocation endpoint. The authorization server will take the received token and remove it from the token store. And if this token was a refresh token, you will find that access tokens that are related to this refresh token will often be revoked also. Now let's say there's an access token received at a resource server. The resource server cannot validate this token by itself because it's just a string. So it's sending this token to an introspection endpoint. And the introspection endpoint at the authorization server will simply check against the database slash whitelist if the token exists. And if so, it's a valid token and it uh, will return a response to the resource server so that this resource so server can accept this uh, incoming request. The other option that you'll see more often today are tokens that are expressed as JSON Web Token. And by default, they do not have a database that persists all issued token because they are self-contained, they contain all the information they need, for example, the issuer, the expiration date, the audience, the, uh, ex, uh, what did I say, expiration date, the uh, issued ad time, all this information is included, including, uh, often including claims about users. So these servers, they will maintain a database, but they will maintain this database as a blacklist. So whenever the revocation endpoint gets called, uh, the authorization server will add this token or a claim of this token, this is in detail, and will maintain this blacklist um, until these tokens expire. And uh, as of then, they, are not need, they don't need to be in this uh, database again. So now let's say if this token, this access token is received on a resource server, and it, uh, oh sorry, uh, the uh, the, the difference here is that the refresh token, if that one gets added to this blacklist, it usually does not affect the access token. Because other than in this database with strings, where you could have the refresh token and the access token in, in the same database table, that is not the case here. So if a refresh token gets uh, added to this list, it may be a case where related access tokens are still valid because they don't appear in this storage. So that's a that's a big difference. Now let's say the access token is received at the protected endpoint. 
the resource server sends it to the introspection endpoint. This uh, endpoint checks against the token storage. And in this case, it checks if it exists, then it's an invalid request. Now, what may happen in this scenario is that a resource server doesn't use the introspection endpoint. It simply validates the JSON web token locally, which it can. And in this case, it will not know if this token has been revoked. So if you want to support this scenario, you have to build a contract where resource servers always take refresh token to the introspection endpoint to get it validated uh, against uh, a revocation list, if revocation is uh, supported at all, which is not always the case, the case either. Let's talk about the uh, refresh token and token lifetime. I think that's important uh, to summarize this little video. So access token are bound to refresh token and ideally access token are only valid until refresh token become uh, invalid so that you cannot have an access token that is usable afterwards. Refresh token live longer than access token. As I've said earlier, access token may live 5 to 60 minutes and refresh token may live uh, from a day up to a few months. You always have to look at this uh, in your case what could be useful because uh, the longer the lifetime the higher the the chances that this token may be misused. Refresh token may be a one-time use only so where we've seen uh, the earlier slide where the uh, server issued a new, ref uh, a new access token based on a used refresh token many servers also issue a new refresh token. The token expiration. So as we've seen, there are sliding windows, there are fixed windows, and there are cases where there's no um, expiration, but uh, revocation instead. Please always remember that depending on your implementation, access token may be usable even after a refresh token got, uh, got uh, revoked. So it means that if your access token has a lifetime of five minutes, and the refresh token get uh, got uh, revoked, this access token may still be usable for five minutes. You have to look at your scenarios, how you uh, can cope with that. And then, of course, in the end, it's the refresh token that determines uh, how often resource owners have to authenticate, how often they uh, get involved. Assuming, again, there's no such thing as a cookie that manages a user session. I hope this little video helped. Thank you for watching. Please uh, continue to leave comments. I'm happy to address them and uh, create new videos based on uh, questions and feedback. And if you like this, please subscribe and you will not miss one of the future videos. Have a good day. Thank you.